Hey guys, so this is the piece that I made with the little bit of salt tutorial. And I'm gonna show you guys how to develop this into, um, I like to do these sort of illustrations over these sort of paintings where um, I'll do like flowers, like cherry blossoms or hydrangea, something um, that's small and white or multicolored. And um, I like to paint them on these sort of things using mostly gouache with hints of the original colors to sort of help draw out that color. So that's what I wanted to do with you guys today. Materials you're gonna need are the colors we used last time or the same colors. I have mine still in this ceramic dish. White gouache, a cup of clean water, a decent brush, and you're gonna want a waterproof um, mark, mark making tool, I know. Awesome. And you're also gonna want a pencil. And the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna start sketching in some hydrangea because that's what I'm painting today and you might want to bring up some reference and I've done hydrangea before that's one of the reasons why I'm doing it for this tutorials I can kind of freehand them quickly while still talking the nice thing about this background is it's kind of beautiful already on its own you don't want to sketch them in too dark we're probably going to end up outlining them with the marker and you're going to want to do a better job than I'm doing and you can draw as many or as few in fact I'll zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing a little bit better you can draw as many or as few as you like and I recommend starting from a corner or a segment of the page like I've whatever I've sort of claimed like the bottom quadrant for this and this is one of those tutorials that you don't need like um, a boatload of drawing ability but it helps to have a little bit and it helps to maybe do some practice on a test sheet of paper if you're doing hydrangea along with me then uh, they have four petals with kind of like a little dot in the middle. So of the flowers, they're pretty easy to freehand. And I have some other tutorials here on this channel where I actually use this technique, but I do it in time lapse, I believe, in order to paint some hydrangea. So should be kind of familiar for you guys um, walking you through it a little bit more in depth and it's okay if you make mistakes because most of this is going to end up getting covered up with your wash and then your paint and then we're going to end up tightening it up even more using that waterproof fine liner and you don't actually have to use a waterproof fine liner if you're going to wait until the end like we're going to wait until the end to do that but it helps because then you can do corrections over that and you can tighten that if you want And I'm just going to draw a few kind of floaty petals. And that's like a really terrible looking one up there. But again, it's not going to matter because we're going to paint it. Alright, so... I've got my sketch completed. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to grab a better brush and I'm going to put a splat of gouache on my work table. Oh, this one's getting kind of dried out.
And then I can start filling some of these forms in. And my intention isn't to entirely cover things up. It's to just start um, kind of delineating forms just very lightly like this. You can even leave the center open. And it's important to use a good brush on this one. I'm using a Winsor Newton Series 7 mostly because this size 5 has a really nice snap to it. I've found also that once I start freehand, once I start painting, I can start freehanding. And sometimes the paints from the prior layers will kind of get reactivated and tone the colors that we used. I'm a little disappointed that's not happening in this instance because that's really handy. It's a good happy accident when that happens, but that's okay because we can always go back in and augment colors since we're still using the same colors and we're working we're starting out with a really really wet gouache mixture because we do want to allow some of the paper to shine through since we have this beautiful texture on the paper you can also soften it and blend it out which is nice so if there are areas like up here where it's too harsh, you can kind of blend that out. And this is a technique that I really like because it's got a very soft effect to it and it's kind of like a nice marriage between doing an illustration on top of the paper and utilizing what we did on the paper And it, you guys can see as it dries, it actually becomes sort of a ghost and that's useful because we can go in and work those colors darker if we need to. And in case you guys don't remember from the prior video with this illustration, we are painting on Blix Premier watercolor paper. I was really excited when they introduced a, an affordable cotton rag. I really enjoy painting on cotton rag. And you guys may have noticed that these are very pale by now. And again, that's okay. The only problem with that is that it kind of mutes some of the beautiful colors underneath. But we're gonna go over this again. few times so I'm not actually that concerned about it Even though I thought I was super 
careful about getting all that salt off. I keep encountering pieces that were stubborn and decided to stay on. This could be a really good technique for, say, a card maker who wants to have a little bit of their own illustration in there. Okay, so as this dries, you can go ahead and tighten it up. Working. A little more opaque. And although it's fairly pricey, the Series 7 is a really wonderful brush for this because at least this particular one has really nice snap and flexibility so I can let the brush do most of the work for me instead of trying to micromanage the brush. And that area down there this can and should be kind of blended out. Then, after this layer has had a chance to dry, I'm going to go over this with some of those original colors. So the pink and the turquoise, and maybe some of the maroon, and I'm going to start adding color to these. Kind of tightening them up a little bit. You could leave them like this if you happen to like this effect. And you guys can see that also dries a little bit muted. And as I'm going, I'm noticing I would really like a little bit more. So I'm going to just start freehanding some petals. Blend them out a little bit. I promise if this looks like a mess, it's going to come together and look a lot better. All right, so we need to let this dry fully. So this has had a little bit of a chance to dry. We're going to go ahead now and 
get started with some of our colors. I have some really intense, pretty colors. So I'm going to start with that Opera Rose. And I'm just going to start out by painting over that white. And you see it kind of soaks in. That's what we want it to do. Because we can always go over it again with white, we can always go back and forth, building up colors, building up tones, until we get exactly what we're looking for. It's one of the things that makes us a really good project. If you don't mind doing a little free hand, free hand drawing. I guess you could do this if you had like embossing materials, like embossing powder and stuff, but I haven't tried that, so I would not be the one to tell you. And yeah, some of the colors do end up a little more dull because of this method. Um, and I mean, that's kind of a shame because we've got some really beautiful colors, but can always go back and kind of tighten them up. really beautiful hydrangea bushes where um, since the pH where they're planted the pH shifts um, they're blue and purple and pink so they're really pretty it's kind of what made me think about doing hydrangea and I'm gonna just touch a little bit of this naphthamide naphthamide there we go naphthamide maroon in here and get some wet into wet blending going since we're working on nice cotton rag paper anyway and then I'll switch over to beautiful marine blue start with that down here And you just want to let your brush do a lot of the work for you. And this is not a good project for using a water brush just because I find that water brushes, even, even the better ones that have better control, tend to just put out too much water. You really want to be able to control the water. And I would even say this isn't a good project for a synthetic brush because synthetic brushes tend to have th uh, stiffer bristles and they'll start to sort of scrape away at the paint whereas we can kind of layer that paint on and you might also notice that the gouache absorbs a lot of your paint and will cause spidering so i feel like as long as you're aware of that ahead of time you can kind of accommodate for it So it would also be a good project if you have a uh, Gansai Tambi set, or Gansai Tambi, right? So we've been fast and loose with our watercolor so far. I'm going to go in now to neutral tint, which is going to be kind of like a purple. Oh, that's a lot of neutral tint. What I'm going to do with that is I'm going to I hoping to get a better sort of transition it's not as purple as I'd remembered it being. 
So what I can do with that is kind of dab in some purple. And then, like over here, we can start out with a blue. And then, working our way around. Ooh, look at that purple. That is a good purple. And you can start filling in. You can either let it dry and start filling in some of the areas. Like I'm going to use that beautiful sort of purple color we're getting from mixing pink and blue together. I'm going to use that to fill in some of these gaps. Not all of them. I'm going to activate under C green and I'm just going to start sketching in some of the hydrangea leaves. And they have serrated leaves, so I want to make sure I get that. And touch some in here, too. There's going to be a little bit of wet into wet blending, but not as much as you might think. And it's going to make for some really nice, vibrant colors. wish these colors stayed as pretty when they're dry as they are when they're wet because they're gorgeous when they're wet. little bit on the pink of that flower but I'm not concerned about it. Fortunate part is all of this is really pretty right now but it's going to dry a little more muted than that so unfortunately a lot of that beautiful color is going to get lost. And go back up in here. Try to 
those are very, very pink. And it's pinker than I wanted. But I'm just trying to sketch in some color. And then we're going to grab some of the blue. Just kind of waffle it in there. Those leaves are looking really nice because you can actually see the color underneath, which I like. And I'll just get a little color on there. Okay, time to let this dry. It's had a chance to dry. We can either go in and kind of tighten up the whites, or we can go in and tighten up some of our colors. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten up some of my colors Let's zoom in for you guys and I'm trying to just let the brush do most of the work for me and that way I get kind of a fresher illustration than if I attempted to render it too much because most of this is already very light and gestural so I don't want to change that I just want to accentuate that may need to refill my marine blue. Now, the ones I'm the most concerned about are some of these transitions. They're just not quite as nice as I would have liked. So I'm going to finish what I'm doing here, but I'm going to go back and clean them up a little bit more. Grab some pink, because these are pink to blue transitions. Okay. Then I'm going to let that dry all the way and go back to the white. So this has had a chance to dry. I'm going to go ahead and reactivate our wash. Actually, I want to make sure it's nice and ready. I'm going to use the gouache just to kind of lighten some areas of color that might be a little dark. Oh my 
on this flower here and it's going to reactivate some of the colors that were underneath it that's totally fine we're good with that because that's going to help sort of integrate the two this is the first time I've done this technique on a nicer paper so I'm having a little bit of a learning curve here too because on the cellulose paper um, I don't know it just handles a lot differently if you guys watch my hydrangea time lapse which I can link right here uh, it just it seems like it just handles a lot differently so I'm gonna use some of the white to kind of outline some of the leaves that might be in the shadows and I'm just very lightly outlining them I don't want them to become a focus And I don't want them to detract away from flowers that are more in the foreground. And if they get kind of ghosted out, you can just go back over them again. And you might want to go through again and pretty much give it another pass, do the same thing. Because that is one of the things I've noticed about using a nicer paper, using a cotton rag paper for this technique, is that the gouache doesn't quite stand up as well as it normally does. So... I'm going to give this a chance to dry and then we will be working on finishing touches and then hopefully adding some sorry looking for something looking for my marine blue and I can't find it there we go uh, we're gonna be adding some of the stronger details using the waterproof marker or pen all right so see you guys in a little bit so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to work really really concentrated I may even have to switch to a smaller brush but I'm really trying to get as much paint as possible and then with a light hand I'm gonna try to do outlines it does just kind of want to bleed out as soon as it hits the white gouache so that is something you're going to want to be aware of 
because we're not trying to do bulky outlines and we're not trying to add a lot of color just trying to add a little bit more contrast back in and some finer details switch over, do the same thing with the marine blue. It's actually a little easier to do it with this one. And after that's dried, we're going to use our waterproof marker to add the fine, well, it's actually a fine liner, but we're going to use this to add our final details to this. So finally, we can add the finishing touches. And if you guys have a computer handy, I would recommend bringing up some hydrangea rest hydrangea reference. I have some up myself. And the intention isn't to go around the whole flower. It's not to outline every single thing. It's just to tighten up some details. And you can decide where you want to outline it, what you want to reinforce, and what you want to kind of recede into the distance. So use your taste and your best judgment on this. But it doesn't have to be a stressful thing, especially if you're doing this as a gift for somebody else. Most people are so impressed and so thrilled when you've taken a chance and you've drawn something. I know giving art, especially art you've done, is always a risk. Um, some people uh, are much more appreciative of it than others. But I think most people, if they're nice people, they're just impressed that you took the time to do it and that you have the skill to do it. I mean, for those of you who are more interested in like comics and who read or watch interviews, a lot of artists will say, you know, if they're asked, well, when did you start drawing a lot? And we'll be like, oh, I've always drawn. But most, most kids draw. That's something that um, you don't have to force a kid to do for the most part. Um, you just make the materials handy and they'll do it. It's something though that as adults we talk ourselves out of or we don't make time for or 
you know, we never really honed the skills when we were younger, and now we're really embarrassed by how our art looks, so we don't pursue it. So that's something that tends to get lost as we get older. It's not... It's really not anything to brag about to say, well, I did it when I was a kid, because most kids love to draw. It's something else to say, I did it when I was a kid, and I still pursue it, I still love it, or, you know, I fell away from it from, for a while, and that really set me back, but now I'm really excited to be able to draw again or paint again. I'm not trying to insult the artists who are like, oh yeah, I've been drawing ever since I was a kid. Um, just harder once you've stopped. It's the sort of thing that I think it's probably easier if you you always kept it going to some capacity and then once you stop that's when you've lost a lot of your momentum and it becomes easy to, to doubt yourself. And even if it's just something you do because you enjoy it. But as you can see, this isn't a particularly hard technique or a particularly difficult te uh, tutorial to follow along with. I think I've done some other examples of this stuff, this particular style of thing that turned out better than this one, but that's okay. I was happy to have another opportunity to share something I know how to do and something I love with you guys. And it make me happy to be able to do it in a more official capacity, but this is what we've got for right now, so. I think this is about finished. Now, um, you could leave it as is. You could have filled up the entire page if you wanted to. Um, if you leave it as is, you could fold it in half and make a card out of it. Or you could um, letter something onto it. Or you could stamp something onto it if you like. Um, you could frame it and keep it for yourself or give it as a gift. I mean, there's still a lot of directions you could go with this since the whole thing isn't isn't completely filled and um, it's not even that distracting of a pattern. So, I hope I have inspired you guys today. I hope I've shown you something new. I hope I've given you some courage to maybe try something new and try something you like, even if it's just uh, some cotton rag watercolor paper. And uh, I hope you guys will check out some of my other watercolor videos here on this channel. And I definitely hope you will head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and check out my ongoing watercolor basic series. And hey, while you're checking stuff out, I would love it if you would check out my beautiful watercolor webcomic, 
7 inch Kara. It is an all ages family friendly adventure so if there's a little one in your life or you're young at heart please check it out at 7inchkara.com or 7inchkara.tumblr.com. So uh, as always it was a pleasure seeing you guys and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye guys!